Hello, my dear students. I welcome you all to my channel. Today we are going to learn an English chapter of class ten. The name of the chapter is Louis Pasteur, Conqueror of Disease. It's written by E. H. Carter with the help of some source. And we are going to read this part one half of the chapter today. It's part one. And so quickly, let us see what do we have to learn in this chapter. But before that, students, if you are viewing my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the like button. So that you get the notifications of the latest upcoming videos, and do watch the video till end. And if you like it, hit the like button and do comment it. And students, you also find nine standard English explanation in this channel. Do go in the playlist, find it, and share it with your friends. So let's start with the chapter. First of all, with the information about the author, our author Herbert Edmund Carter. He was an American biochemist and an educator. And he grew up in the central Indiana, and he has received his bachelor's degree from DePaul University. He also received his PhD in 1934 in organic chemistry from the University of Illinois. So this is the brief about the author, and with the help of some source, he has written about Louis Pasteur. Let us see what he has to say about him. So he says that on the field of battle. On the battlefield of his campaigns, the Napoleons uh, had a brave soldier with them whose name was Pasteur, and to this Pasteur there was a brave son. A brave son was born by name Louis Pasteur, and this happened after seven years of Waterloo, war, war of Waterloo. And he was not a soldier. His son did not became a soldier, but he became a fighter. What fighter? He became a fighter of disease, who fought against disease. He devoted his whole life to study what we sometimes call as germs, and other science people of science they call it as bacteria. Some Greek word meaning is uh, called as little rods. These bacteria are nothing but vegetable organisms, little rod-shaped plants which exist in the air, water, and soil. And also in the bodies of animals and plants, but some of them causes disease, while some do not. Some are used to convert matter into food for plants. So we have both the side effects, negative effects, and the positive effects of these germs or bacteria, which we call with different names. Then he says that Louis Pasteur had a very busy and interesting life. He not only made some exciting discoveries about germs, but also he was Uh, he used to discover it in practical way. He used to do it in practical way and prove it and show it to the people. He always used to work very hard in his laboratory. He was always with test tubes and all kinds of experiments. But nearly all the time he was working to help people who were suffering from many diseases. He wanted to help them in a special way. And among them, he just wanted to help those people who work in brewers. Breeders of silkworms and cowkeepers. The students, brewers, are the person or the people who works in the manufacturing company of beers. Breeders of silkworm, the one who works in silk trading uh, companies where the silk is made out of silkworms, and cowkeepers, you know, as taming of animals uh, like animal husbandry. So these people were mostly affected by many of the diseases. So he used to help these poor people who are working in this. Companies or this uh, field in who are in this field, and he always used to help these people because he thought they are the main people, important people of the France who are working in the most important industries. He considered these industries as most important in France because it used to help them to develop, and he wanted to help these people. So he says. Proudly that I'm proud of being able to help this country in this way. He says helping these people is nothing but helping my country because it is directly or indirectly helping the country to develop. So this was his thinking. And then Louis Pasteur, who was born in a little French country town, he was interested in chemistry from very young age. He studied hard in Paris. He showed great promise. He began to teach and lecture also as a professor of chemistry. Then he became a professor at Strasbourg in Alsace, and then he married and uh, lived with a wife who was always his closest companion and assistant. 
then Paxley was also deeply interested in all the new experiments that were being made in chemistry and he decided to solve some of the most difficult problems that were worrying many chemists and other scientists who were not able to find the answers so Axter wanted to solve it. Sometimes he used to sit for four hours and for hours and hours he used to sit quite silently, motionless and he used to think very hard about his difficulties about solving that questions, that problems of chemistry. And when he found it in the easiest way and because he found this as the easiest way to solve the problem sitting quietly in a corner thinking without any emotion in his body and he used to think this was one of the easiest way he used, to, he used to say to solve a problem and when he got the solution his kind tired looking face would brighten with pleasure and excitement and he would rush around to tell his discovery to his wife to other, to other people who all used to help him he used to share his enjoyment and his and his success that, that he had got a solution for this problem. This way he used to spend his life in discovery and in solving the difficult problems. Then in 1854 he was appointed as the head of a college of science in Lille and it was a busy manufacturing town in the northeast of France and he was pleased about this. He was very happy because he always felt that trades and industries could be helped very much by the researchers of men of science. He thought that industries and the trades would be helped only with the help when it is provided by the researchers. When the researches are done in the field of science, those men only can help these men in industries by researching new things and they can bring up with new ideas and that will be implemented here and the industries will be helped. So his chance to be useful soon came. So he got this opportunity and Pasteur as a young chemist had always been interested in the problems of why and how living things decay, why milk turns sour, why meat goes bad, why wine ferments. These were the questions and the problems we, which he had and he, he had much interest in and he wanted to solve it. So he started to give some lectures in Lille on fermentation. Then on the chief industries in Lille was the manufacture of alcohol from beetroot. There was a company, manufacturing company, who used to manufacture alcohol from beetroot. So he was fortunate enough, he got the opportunity to carry out his experiment in some of the breweries. Breweries are nothing but the, uh, the companies or the industries who make or manufacture beers. So he was fortunate to do the experiment in one of such industry and one manufacturer consulted Pasteur about his beer turning out bad. I mean, it was fermenting, it was turning bad, it used to smell and it was not being, uh, the, it was not coming out properly. So Pasteur by helping this brewer managed to discover all sorts of things that he did not know before about yeast. So to help this Pasteur, this manufacturer, he came out with the research and he came to know about the yeast which no one and even he did not know earlier. Now yeast is used to make beer foam and bread rise up lightly. Students might have seen that the bread, how it rises. It, when we bake it, it just rises and it comes up in the size. So it is nothing but because of the help of yeast. In the same way, the curd or the milk turning into curd. So all these are due to the yeast. So this was found and by the pasture. Louis Pasteur. Then Pasteur became certain that yeast was alive and made up of tiny living cells. He came to the conclusion of this, that these are alive, these cells and it has, yeasts are alive and they are made up of tiny living cells. Then when these cells were healthy, the yeast acted well, but if they were diseased, the yeast and the beer went wrong. So he said that because yeast are alive and if they are active and healthy, they acted well and they have, have the things to turn out very well. It was positive result. And if the yeast are weak and if they're having disease, then the whole thing used to be wrong or the, the beer used to smell or it used to turn out bad. So this was his research. After a few years, Pasteur was made a director of scientific studies at a famous college in Paris. He was still thinking about the decay in yeast and germs. And one of the problems that he was trying to answer was this. Do the germs form from other germs or do they just come out of themselves? So this was the question in his mind. 
so people like pasteur believe that germs were carried in the air and might infect other things that came in contact with them so if people also believe like as pasteur believed that germs are nothing but they are carried in the air and they might infect other people and things who are, whoever comes in to contact with it then others believed in what they called a spontaneous generation that is the belief that germs had no parents but just occurred by themselves like they were not born but they just came by themselves in the air this was the belief of the spontaneous generation so then press press to prove that he was right by a very simple and clever experiment he put some soap in some bottles and he boiled it and he destroyed the germs and then he uh, closed the lid of the bottle and kept it and the other one he kept for a longer time and it had turned back the one which was not boiled so this shows that when you boil it at the at the heat at some temperature it will not be turning into bad it will be fresh then he said uh, so he took out one of the bottles and split the soup and the dust traps he also covered with the with the lid and the other one which was not covered had the dust traps the the dust had settled on it and when it was touched with that it uh, the soup started becoming bad it, it turned back that means that dust had the germs in it so we can say that the moving air and the atmosphere which is having dust may also have germs in it which may turn your uh, food items or anything into infection or it, it can make it infectious and it can turn it bad so this was one of the experiment that we did that the things which are not boiled and are kept in direct contact with the dust may spoil and the things which are boiled may not be spoiled so easily with the help of the germs and the dust then he says this is the only one of the many hundreds of experiments he has done such many experiments such uh, like this uh, as we have seen one here and uh, to show that how full the air is full of dust of particles and how germs may be carried by the dust he has also proved that then one very useful experiment he was uh, he made to show the difference between the pure air and the stale air also is there where pester again filled some bottles with the soup he took it in a little hotel bedroom and he kept kept tightly over there uh, with where the air had hardly ever changed where in a locked room you don't have the changing of atmosphere and the fresh air coming so he kept one soup bottle there then he broke their necks off so that the air could enter freely he did not close the lid he just kept it in the closed room and after a few minutes sealed them again then after some after some times he sealed it then because when some of the air had gone inside then he had sealed it and then he took some of the bottles in the field he did the same thing he kept there after some time he closed the lid again same thing he did with the high mountain area there he kept one bottle after some time he sealed it and when he opened it one by one the hotel bedroom soup was full moldy it had gone completely moldy it was it had turned into bad the bad the bottles opened in the field were moldy but not quite so bad because the field there was also a bit fresh but those opened on the mountain had no germs in them at all it was all fresh this showed the difference of the pure air and the stale air stale is nothing but infectious and the polluted air you can say so this was practically proved by lewis pasteur then nowadays we pay a great deal of attention to pure air pure open windows to freedom of, from dust to garden cities and pasteur was one of them to show this very first that how necessary it is to fight against germs and disease to keep our house open to keep the windows open so that we have the fresh air coming in and going out then another very useful discovery of pasteur was when he was working in paris was the process of pasteurization which even till now is famous and been followed and some french wine growers when they had trouble that their past their that their wines are turning sour at that time he heated a wine and this process came into existence or it was invented you can say and pasteur showed that by heating the wine or milk or any liquid the temperature of 50 to 60 degree centigrade the germs may become harmless they may not have so much of 
strength to harm the particular thing so pasteurized milk is the milk which has been treated in this way and then sealed to prevent the germs being entering and so that it is not spoiled it spoiled up fast then louis pasteur was that uh, was what we should call an all-round scientist. He did not work in one field, but each and every field of science he was working and he was an all-round scientist, we can call him. Then all the research which he did in his laboratories was meant to help his fellow human beings. The main motive was to help his fellow human beings. So for that purpose, he used to keep on working and researching in his laboratories. It would be impossible to imagine Pasteur experimenting with explosives or poison gas. He wanted to help his fellow human beings, so he even went to the extent of experimenting with explosive and poison gases also. So this is the, you can say that the dedication towards the invention and, and the humanitarian approach which is having to help the people by uh, through researching many things for them. So this we have done with the part one of the Louis Pasteur chapter. I hope you all understood till here and you followed it interesting and Thank you for watching my video. Do keep waiting for part two of this chapter. I'll be back soon with the next video with the part two of Louis Pasteur chapter. Thank you. If you liked it, hit the like button.